Um, so basically, I'm going to jump right in here. Uh, what is search engine optimization? For those that aren't aware, it's basically the act of publishing and marketing information in a way to improve search engine understanding of website content. It's arguably the best marketing strategy ever because it enables you to reach unlimited people with even the smallest budget. Now I say that it's the best avenue ever and that's not just because I teach on it and that I, you know, I'm in this niche. It's basically because because with SEO you can compete with some of the most competitive websites online like amazon.com, um, you know, in, you know the MSN shopping or, or NBC. I mean you, you can compete with some of the biggest websites out there, Petco, PetSmart, and you know just with search engine optimization you can compete with companies that have you know multi multi million dollar advertising budgets um, just through the organic uh, listings in Google and when I'm talking about the organic listings I'm talking about the main listings that you see in Google so when you do a Google search you see at the top uh, the top side there is sponsored search results and on the right hand side you've got sponsored results and those are results the pay-per-click spot where people are paying per click and then you've got the results in the middle where, where about 85% of the, of the uh, real estate on that screen is taken up by the free side, which is called the organic side. And that's where most people are actually going to click on your links and find your information. And what's great about it is that it doesn't cost you anything to get ranked there. And so um, as I talk about SEO, just keep in mind it stands for search engine optimization. And basically it's just the act of publishing and marketing your information in a way to improve the search engine understanding of your website content. It's probably the easiest explanation. Um, basically, what we're going to talk about is, is things you can do with your site to make them, um, make, the search, make them search engine friendly so that people find your content and you get that free traffic. Uh, here's a few little quick search engine statistics. The only three main search engines to worry about are Google, Yahoo, and MSN. Uh, basically, you know, there's there's literally thousands of other little mini search engines, but Google, Yahoo, and MSN actually make up for about 95 plus percent of all searches. Google alone gets 75 percent of all searches, and then some of the smaller search engines like Lycos and Hotbot and some of these other ones, their their results are actually come as a result of Google, um, Google or Yahoo or MSN. One of those search engines drives those companies' results, and a lot of the smaller search engines. So in all actuality, it's really pretty much like Google, Yahoo, and MSN own the search market. And there are little search engines, but you don't need to worry about them. Uh, Google gets 75% of all searches. So that's where you should focus your attention when you're doing search engine optimization and SEO and looking for traffic generation. Google's really where it's at. Now here's another interesting stat, but believe it or not, YouTube even receives more searches than Yahoo and MSN. That was a recent statistic that's come out. Uh, YouTube, um, when I say they receive searches, they have a search area on YouTube. And that shows you right there how powerful video marketing is, which we're going to cover video marketing in some upcoming lessons. We, we touched on it briefly last week, uh, but we're going to cover it even more in depth in the upcoming lessons here. But that shows you how powerful video is for driving traffic. I mean, like I said, YouTube alone receives more searches than Yahoo and MSN. That means people are going to YouTube just to find random information. And what's powerful too is these YouTube rankings will come up in the Google search results, in the Yahoo search results, in the MSN search results. So, you know, it kind of gives you, you know, leverage when you're doing video marketing. I just wanted to point that stat, that statistic out though, and it shows you just how big the Google search engine actually is. Google is powerful, so you need to focus your efforts around them related to SEO. You know, um, every search engine basically looks for the same uh, aspects, very similar components. Um, but the one I really only worry about is Google and let the other ones just fall into place where they may. Okay, we're going to talk next here about relevancy and search engine optimization. The search engines make money, just so you know, with advertising and they get people to perform searches by providing relevant results to their users. And so basically what that means is that you know Google they get they get their money from advertising revenues. You know, so, so all the pay-per-click ads and a lot of that stuff you see that's how Google makes their income. And so, you know, they want people to perform searches on their site. And so they want people to come to their site often because they're finding the information that they want online. So uh, basically, you know, they, if you're typing in, you know, like, um, you know, Titleist Golf Club into a search engine, the expected result is to find a Titleist Golf Club. The user is not trying to look for um, you know that they don't want to find information on a Callaway golf club. That's a totally different brand of golf club. They even worse yet, the person doesn't want to find information on golf bags or golf balls. 
They're there to find information about a Titleist golf club in this example. That's a brand of golf club. Same thing, it might be a Panasonic HDTV. They didn't particularly look for a Sony HDTV. They were looking for a Panasonic HDTV. So what would happen if the search engines weren't providing relevant results to their users, the people would leave and go to another search engine to find what they want. They'd find a search engine that gave them better results. And so that's why Google and the other search engines they want you know relevant results at the top they want your site to rank at the top believe it or not contrary to popular belief you know they want you to have you know good content I'm gonna show you how to provide that content to Google in a way that is is relevant in a non spammy way so that the search engines will love your site and display it because it's kinda of, look at it kinda of like a partnership you wanna partner up with Google to help them achieve their business objective and in return they're gonna help you drive a lot of traffic you want them their business objective is to get users coming to their site looking for relevant results and that is that's really their sole purpose online is to get people to use their search engines so they do everything they can to make sure relevant results are coming up and so that's something very important to keep in mind here and that's why I brought this slide up here Search engines have a very vested interest in providing the best results possible, as I covered. So I just want to make that point one more time. They have a very vested interest in making this possible because that's their main business. I apologize for the background noise if you hear anything. We're actually in the middle of a huge storm here in, in the Oklahoma. So, <laughs> so I do apologize if anybody hears that. We've got piles of rain and, and uh, thunder and stuff. Um, okay, but you need to make your pages and your website as relevant as possible and that's what we're going to talk about here in the upcoming slides. There are several different on-page optimization factors that you can do to make your pages on your website search engine friendly and more relevant for the search engines. And so I'm going to talk about relevancy because that's so important. If your site is relevant for the search engines, it will rank higher in the search results. So um, now in order to make your site relevant, you need to focus on keyword phrases and so after this slide talking about keywords I'm actually going to touch on relevance uh, but I want to talk to you guys real quick about keyword phrases because that has to do with relevancy because the keywords are what make, makes your site relevant for the search engine results you know um, like I was using that Titleist Golf Club example before if you are selling Titleist Golf Clubs if you happen to be an affiliate for them or let's say even let's say you're a golf store in um, Let's say you're you're a golf a golf pro shop in um, you know let's say uh, you know D Jacksonville uh, Mississippi or something or Jackson Mississippi uh, um, let's say Jacksonville Florida okay there we go so you are a golf pro shop Jacksonville Florida and that and you want people to come to your pro shop you know that's the kind of relevancy that's those are the kind of keywords you would want to use on your site and so I want to narrow down here though so you first understand how do you find the most profitable keywords for your campaign because that's where all this relevancy that's where all these on-page factors are going to stem from and so I want to start here with the keywords now some of you have probably seen this slide and in, in some of my other presentations um, but I want to touch on this one more time so it really hits home because it's a very important part of this process um, so the first phrase here you know a generic word or phrase those are low value keywords with high competition and they have poor conversions and those would be keywords like pets or real estate or even just football um, those are just generic keyword phrases. They're not going to get you the results you want. That'd be like golf, you know, as, as another example. Then you've got a category level keywords. They have a little higher value and they're, they are a little easier to rank for. And those are keywords like pet supplies, Oklahoma real estate, and college football. And they're still not easy to rank for because those are still highly competitive. Um, but they're a little higher value. And the reason they're higher value keywords is because people are a little closer to finding what they want. Like, I'm going to just throw this out there so you understand where I'm going with this, but if somebody types in digital cameras, that's kind of a, you know, or cameras, that's a generic phrase. A category keyword would be like, you know, digital cameras. Subcategory would be like 10 megapixel digital cameras. And then a specific topic would be Kodak 10 megapixel digital camera. That would be a specific topic because it's a specific brand. And you're going to find that the, sub, the specific topic keyword phrases they may not get you the most traffic, but they're going to get you the highest value of visitor. You know, it's kind of like if somebody types in, um, you know, a subcategory keyword phrase, they type in like Sacramento real estate and or pet supplies online. You know, they want to buy pet supplies online. But if they're typing in automatic pet feeders, there is no doubt in your mind what they're looking for. If you type in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma apartment complexes, there's no doubt in your mind what they want. 
if you type in you know Walla Walla Washington um, you know Walla Walla Washington uh, you know winery you know what they want they want to look for a winery in Walla Walla Washington or they want to find a lawyer in uh, you know Sacramento California lawyer you know they're not just going to type in lawyers California because California lawyers could mean every single city in California that could be you know a little hairy and so you want to find and target these specific topic keyword phrases because a lot of people you know will sit there and, and say well you know it's great to, to rank for real estate because it gets millions of visitors well well the phrase real estate that could be everything from commercial real estate uh, regular real estate apartment somebody wanting just to learn about real estate you really don't know what their goal is and when they're typing in specific keywords like maybe they're typing in diet information you know weight loss information weight loss tips those are keyword phrases people know what they want they want weight loss tips you know um, if they type in a Kai Berry weight loss tips or a Kai Berry weight loss that's a little more targeted and so I want you to keep that in your mind when you're doing your keyword research so we're going to talk a little about how to find your keywords you want to put yourself in your customers shoes what problem does my product or service solve for my typical customer? Ask yourself that question. See what people are searching for to find your website. You can use uh, Google Analytics. It's free to set up. You could use Webalizer or you could use AW Stats. If you are using a control panel account um, with cPanel like HostGator or Bluehost, they come equipped with Webalizer and AW Stats. And those are located inside your control panel. And then Google Analytics is something you can find by just going to uh, search engines and looking up Google Analytics. So just type in Google Analytics and it would be the first result you see. And they'll show you how to install it on your website. And so that's something you want to use because it will tell you what kind of keywords people are looking for to find your website already. And it will kind of amaze you that even though you may not be doing much SEO now, you're amazed that people are accidentally still finding your site. So once you start doing SEO, it can make a huge impact for you. And you also want to consider related keywords. So if you're in the pet niche, it might be like, you know, pet supplies might also might consider keywords like dog supplies or cat supplies or bird supplies, as an example. So I'm going to show you on screen here next how to actually do keyword research. So the AdWords keyword tool, it's an absolutely free keyword tool that I love to use and so I'm gonna just click on that and we're gonna pull up the window here so we've got here on our screen the AdWords keyword tool is up on the screen I'm gonna just bring it over here to the for the recording so right here in the AdWords keyword tool you're going to notice um, it's going to ask you to enter one keyword or phrase per line and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in a main uh, keyword phrase so what I'm gonna type in here is your main you know keyword so if your main keyword phrase let's just say it is um, golf golf balls or golf clubs golf clubs is your main keyword phrase but see that's not your highest value keyword phrase as we've discussed but it might be you know it's a keyword that gets a fair amount of searches and that little random uh, letter sequence that I typed in there that's actually just you know um, the, the standard you know form to prevent spammers and so you just fill that in and then choose get keyword ideas and then you'll wait just a moment and what this is going to do this tool is going out there into the Google database and it's pulling up the search results from Google so it's pulling up a variety of different search results um, you know from the Google results and you're gonna see here um, right inside here you're gonna see it says you know like advertiser competition it says uh, local search volume and it says global search volume so like global search volume is more like you know like it says right here in this tab it shows you like the approximate number of monthly search uh, monthly number of search queries matching each keyword phrase so this is kind of on a monthly basis and so um, that's a lot of keyword for you know people looking up these different topics and you know so basically it's kind of a monthly number and it kind of gives you some idea of to how they're finding this data now the local data and the global data will sometimes be kind of skewed at this point uh, but the main thing you're looking for is you're just looking for volume you're looking for keyword phrases that have you know searches over over a thousand or a couple thousand that are that are decent keyword phrases to go after and so one thing you want to do then is go right over here and you want to do a search by um, by clicking right there it'll actually sort them out by how many people are looking up uh, these various keyword phrases now you notice here golf clubs and golf club are two different searches and, and that's something 
that we'll talk about here in a moment, but believe it or not, they actually are different. So that's something to keep in mind. Google will look at results actually different. I'm gonna, I'll actually just prove that to you here in a quick little search on Google. So if you go to Google here and we were to type in, let's say golf clubs, you notice the result. And then if we type in golf club, it changed. You notice the result changed by just taking off the, by by basically just taking off the S, the result to or, yeah, totally changed. And so if you add the S, so it's plural, you see the results here, it's totally different. So that's something important and something that's you know really something you wanna keep an eye out for because Google looks at them as completely different, quite a bit different keyword phrases. They have some of the similar results, but they're all not the same, you know, it's not the same keyword phrases. So that's very important. So you see here, um, you've got a variety of keywords here that it, that it sorts through. Now, what I look for is I'm trying to just find a keyword phrase that has a fair amount of searches, you know, something north of, of 25,000 is good, you know, on a monthly basis. Um, you know, and it doesn't even have, even the lowest things like, you know, equipment golf clubs, uh, hybrid golf clubs, you know, keywords like that. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a keyword that has tons and tons of searches either. It can be a smaller keyword phrase that has maybe a thousand searches, you know, because it, it's going to, a lot of times people will not target keyword phrases if they don't see any, you know, if they feel like, well, it's only got a thousand searches or it's only got 700 searches, I'm not going to look for that. Well, like if you look at this keyword right here, Callaway pre-owned golf clubs. That keyword is only searched for 720 times a month. So a lot of people are going to say, well, that's no good. That's not a good keyword phrase. Well, if you can rank at the top of the search engines and you can get, you know, even even half those people or even a, a tenth of those people on a monthly basis, that's about 100 visitors to a specific page on your site. That's like having a store that has 100 potential customers walking in. And I'll guarantee you, if somebody's typing in Callaway pre-owned golf clubs, and maybe you're an affiliate for eBay or something of that nature, or you're, and you're optimizing for Callaway used golf clubs or pre-owned golf clubs, you're getting a targeted buyer. They know what they want. They want a used golf club from Callaway. You know, they're not just looking for used golf clubs, they're looking for Callaway used golf clubs. And so that's something to, to keep in mind, you know. Um, you know, you've got lady golf club set. That's a pretty decent keyword phrase. And so, you know, it's just a matter, you just want to look for keywords that have, have um, numbers in this column. Sometimes you'll see not enough data. And so I, I tend to kind of steer away from those keyword phrases. So, um, so when you found, when you found a keyword phrase, you know, it's just a matter of browsing through here, typing in your main keyword phrase. So, so kind of your main niche. So you might type in like weight loss into this category here, weight loss and then just type in get keyword ideas. And you'll notice here, you know, you've got, uh, you know, weight loss diet program, uh, weight loss program. It's got, you know, it's a little easier to rank for because it's called more of a long tail keyword. It has three or four, you know, different words to it. Like here's one, free weight loss programs, quick weight loss center, vegetarian weight loss, weight loss eating all these searches have a fair amount of volume and this number here that you're seeing it's not going to be 100 percent accurate all the time i just want you to keep that in mind the number you see is not what you get there's times when this number you know it's could be way off or it could you know way off on the high end or way off on the low end it kind of can fluctuate and vary so don't look at this number like the gospel truth but look at it as an indicator as to the volume of your various keyword phrases so that's very important to keep in mind. And you want to find keyword phrases that you're really targeting your main site for. Um, you know, you want, like on your main page, you want to go after those keywords that get you a lot of different searches. You know, like, like if you're a finance website, you might be doing something like, you know, small business loans. You know, that might be your keyword phrase if you're doing like business financing or something. Um, you know, so you're trying to get ranked for, you know, small business loans because that has quite a few searches, about 200,000. Um, but you notice here, when you type that in, you'll find a lot of different keyword phrases that you could create content around, you know. So, so you might have a keyword like, like let's say, you know, weight loss. Or let's just say, um, let's say bird watching, for example. And so you type in bird watching as a niche. Well, here's... Um, you know the main keyword you're trying to go after maybe you have a site about um, you know bird watching binoculars and it's all about bird watching binoculars is your main keyword phrase 
but then you've also got on top of that additional content pages that you could write about, different pages you could add to your site that optimize these additional keyword phrases. And so you can use this tool when you're trying to come up with article ideas, when you're trying to identify um, article results, you know, when you're trying to sit there and identify, okay, what kind of content could I write on my niche topic? You know, so, so let's say it is a life coach, you know, as an example. Maybe you're a life coach to help people uh, with personal development. So we do a Google search on life coach, you'll see 201,000. You see life coaching, 110,000. Life coach training, become a life coach, personal life coach, life coaching courses, life coach jobs, Christian life coach, certified life coach, and, and it just goes on and on. These are all potential keyword phrases um, that you could, uh, what I like to do, the best thing you can do to get yourself the best result is find a keyword that has a lot of searches, a fair amount of searches, try to target your main, you know, your main site around that one. Like life coach training, it's got a good amount of searches. It's not all that, you know, extremely competitive like life coaches, but what's interesting is you'll notice here, look what's at the beginning of that keyword, life coach. You know, so you also are optimizing not only for life coach but life coach training. So I hope you guys can kind of see that. And so beyond that on your life coach site, create an article around each one of these subject matters that you see. Each one of these are topics that people are looking for and it gives you article content ideas to write about. Now one other thing I'll do on top of using the AdWords keyword tool is I'll also go and use the free word tracker tool. Uh, word tracker is another keyword research software. I personally don't uh, pay for the upgrade but you could if you wanted to but I just use the free keywords tool from word tracker and you could just type in your main keyword phrase here again. So let's say that we find a keyword phrase here, like let's say life coach training as an example, and I was going to copy that keyword phrase. Now keep in mind here, this is important to note, Google's results here are monthly, Word Tracker's results are gonna be daily. So it's gonna be daily results. Now, you notice here life coach training is now down to 62 searches, but what that means is that there are 62 searches per day within the word tracker system and the word tracker system is actually feeding results from uh, Yahoo and other places it's not actually feeding their results from Google so you could actually multiply that number by you know quite a bit more I, I usually multiply by about 10 times 10 to 12 times this number so you take this number multiply that by 10 or 12 times um, you know about 10 or 12 times times 30 so let's pull up the calculator here so we have 62, 62 um, you know, times, let's say 10, that's 620 searches a day times 30 for the year or for the month, um, you know, on average, and that's about 19,000 searches, you know, so, and then if you go back to Google, you'll see it's, you know, showing around 9,000. So you can notice that these results are never going to be 100% accurate as to the number of searches it's actually getting. You're just looking for volume. You're looking for some significant volume, some decent size volume, so that you're getting keyword phrase, you know, that gets traffic because you don't want to build your business on a dead end road. You know, you want to build it where the traffic's at. You want to play in the traffic, you know, as a business partner of mine says. Um, so that's something you want to do. You want to be where the people are, you know, so like McDonald's, you know, they, you know, a great example, um, another great business friend of mine talked about, you know, um, where if McDonald's were to build a franchise, you know, they're not going to go build it on some side road, you know, they're going to build it where the traffic's at, where the people are. So you want to build your sites where the traffic's at. And that's why it's so important to do keyword research to find actual keyword phrases. So I like to combine these sites because what it tells me is that, okay, both of these keyword tools identify to me that there is traffic for this keyword phrase. So I use these tools in tandem, you know, to determine the best keyword phrases. So again, the free word tracker tool, you just plug in your information right there and you go to town with it. So you just type that in and, and you're off to the races. So hope this gives you a nice little overview of using keyword research tools. So we're gonna jump right back here. Um, there's also one other thing you can do with the Google tool that I'm gonna actually show you real fast. Um, you can actually search within your competitor websites for additional keyword phrases. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So you notice here, if we were to go and let's just think of a niche, let's just type in the word, um, let's just say rock climbing as a niche. I'm just typing that in. Um, so let's say you happen to be in the rock climbing niche and, and again this applies if you're a lawyer this applies in whatever niche you are 
Now, one thing I do want to talk about, if you are a local business, because we have some people taking this training that are local businesses, and let's say you know you are a Tulsa chiropractor, because that's an example I was using. Um, so Tulsa chiropractor on the keyword research side, you're probably going to find not, sometimes you might even find your main keyword phrases don't have tons and tons of searches. Um, you know, for them, some may show even, you know, not many searches, but it's very important that you're optimizing for those because Google sometimes will not give you, they'll sometimes show you this not enough data number when they really don't have, you know, tons of data. They haven't pulled it. Doesn't mean that keyword's not being searched for. So, in those local search cases, you need to determine what keyword phrases your customers are going to find you for. And those are keywords like, you know, if I'm in, uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I want a chiropractor, I'm going to type in Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractor. I'm going to type in Tulsa chiropractors. I'll type in Tulsa chiropractors, okay. Tulsa, okay chiropractors. You know, same thing for dentists. It might be Chicago, Illinois dentist, Illinois dentist, um, Chicago dentist. Um, you get the idea there. So don't get discouraged if you don't see any searches, you know, for your niche. Just, you know, if you're in a city, especially if you're in a smaller city, it's still important that you're targeting keyword phrases um, you know, with your keywords, but just think up some keyword phrases that your customers would use, and that's for the local results. Uh, but if you're trying to go on like a national scale, rank for uh, keywords like title is golf club and things like that on a national scale, you want to try to narrow down what kind of volume you're working from. So now here in this rock climbing example, I want to show you how to use another tool to find some more keyword phrases. If I was in the rock climbing niche, I would just type in rock climbing and I would just go right over here and copy the URL, rockclimbing.com here. Um, and whatever niche it is, you can do this for any of your competi com competitor, competitor websites. And you're going to go to the AdWords keyword tool again. And there's an option here that says website content. And you're going to just plug in your URL there that you selected. Um, in this case, it's rockclimbing.com. So just grab rockclimbing.com and include other pages on my site linked from this URL. So you could, um, as one strategy, is to include other pages on the site that are linked uh, from this URL. To, because a lot of times rock climbing sites or you know, a rock climbing site will link off to other rock climbing sites. Just like you know, a legal site might link to other legal websites um, you know, and things like that because they, they offer you know, similarities in value. So what you're going to do then is go by get keyword ideas and it's going to scour this website. It's actually analyzing the website for you and it's going to take about a minute and so just be a little little patient here and it's analyzing the website and what it's going to do is actually pull up and tell us what kind of keyword phrases they are actually going after and it gives you some additional keyword phrase terms to consider going after. Now this is a really powerful tool because it kind of narrows things down into little niches for yourself. So you see here, um, if you do this search, and you can click on that button to sort them by you know, how many searches you have, rock climbing shoes, that's an entire niche in itself. And so you could identify, and so like if you're in a niche and you see stuff like this and you're not targeting those kind of keyword phrases, um, you could say, wow, I didn't know rock climbing itself could be a niche. I need to be focusing on that too. You know, I need to add that to my arsenal. So you see here, rock climbing shoes in this example is, you know, right there, rock climbing shoe, rock climbing shoe without the S, mad rock climbing shoes, 510 rock climbing shoes, discount rock climbing shoes, evolve rock climbing shoes. All these came from me analyzing a competitive website and I identified some additional keywords. So here's under rock climb, rock climbing, rock climbing indoor, rock climbing gear, rock climbing equipment, rock climbing gym, it goes on and on and on. So that's another powerful way to use this Google AdWords keyword tool. Just like Google's a leader in search, I feel like Google has some of the leading um, tools that you can use to identify keyword phrases. And they have this set up for people you know, using AdWords to identify keywords to go after, but you can also use it you know, obviously for SEO to identify your keyword phrases. So I would definitely use not only the search feature, so descriptive words or phrases where you type in your niche, I would also use website content because even if you think, okay, well I have no clue, but I know this is a site that's a competitor of mine, just put in that URL and then it will pull up some other ideas for you. Like here's rock climbing as an idea. Okay, and so then you go right back over here and say, okay, I'm gonna consider indoor rock climbing. So you just type in indoor rock climbing in here and you're off to the races, you know, because you're going to notice here, indoor rock climbing. 
and you'll notice it's going to bring up a whole nother list of results just related to indoor rock climbing and so finding content for you to write about there should be no issues whatsoever because you're going to notice here like basically I tend to focus more on this global side with Google just so you know um, but you're going to notice here a lot of these say not enough data uh, but you see some that have you know some search volume within them so it's something for you to look at and say okay even though they have very little competition these are keywords that I could rank for and get some traffic for you know like indoor rock climbing in, in NYC New York City indoor rock climbing supplies indoor rock climbing Buffalo New York indoor rock climbing Massachusetts um, you know so you get the idea but rock climbing itself indoor rock climbing at 130 additional keyword phrases that Google had within their database somewhere so it's very important to do keyword research before you start taking on you know this stuff because you need to make your sites relevant for these keywords and so now that you kind of have an understanding of keyword research I'm gonna dig into some more ways to optimize your site but we're gonna continue real quick here um, with where we left off so what you can do then is you know run Google searches is another strategy that I found to identify keyword phrases so I'll show you what I mean by that so let's just pull up a Google search window here which I have and if I were in uh, let's just throw out another niche market here and um, let me just say let's say personalized jewelry was my niche so you are a jeweler and you did personalized jewelry we type in personalized jewelry into Google now all, a lot of this stuff right now I'm doing is unrehearsed so you know you guys can see it's very very live so you can kind of see how I think um, so type in personalized jewelry that's your main niche and then scroll to the bottom of Google and they have a feature here where it says search searches related to personalized jewelry and it says personalized gold jewelry sterling silver personalized jewelry these are related searches that Google has identified that other people look for when they're in this niche so now you type in personalized gold jewelry you click on that and it will narrow down even more results and it will say okay so have you considered custom made gold jewelry Ferguson jewelry custom rings antique custom jewelry custom gold chains so then you click on that and you kind of get the idea because it kind of helps you identify okay here's personalized gold necklaces that's a keyword I hadn't thought about so you, you take that keyword phrase and you copy it and you can come right over here to the AdWords keyword tool again and you can kind of now I hope understand how this tool works together and I'm spending a lot of time on this keyword research part just because keyword research is so vital to your online business it's a very very important aspect to your web business so you type in personalized gold necklaces and you notice that does have some search volume behind it so that's getting about 1900 searches personalized gold necklace without the s is about 3600 it's got quite a few more searches so that could tell you okay I should target some page around personalized gold necklaces or maybe I should start selling there maybe I should do you know an ebook on how to take care of your personalized gold necklace whatever the case might be you get the idea of how you can just by using regular Google search results you can identify more keywords to go after that you may not have uncovered even in the AdWords tool or sometimes you could just start with the regular Google search to start identifying some uh, you know keywords that don't have tons of competition because like pet supplies that's tough to rank for but you start doing things like you know like like pet feeders you know and you're gonna start seeing okay that's getting a little more narrow and then you start doing things like you know automatic pet feeders and this is a site that I'm a, a very small owner on but you'll notice here you know we compete their, their sites you know Amazon um, some other big sites that are trying to compete for that eBay and a few others you know out there that are trying to go for these different keyword phrases and that's all just because of powerful SEO strategies and so let's just jump right back in here and another thing you can do the same thing I just showed you with Google using the MSN live search you can just go to msn.com or live.com live and run a search on their search engine and on the right hand side as it is right now they have what you just I just showed you in Google at the bottom they give you uh, related searches Google Insights that's another really powerful tool and I'll show you that real fast and then we'll jump back to a little more content here um, the Google Insights tool is another fabulous tool for you to use in your arsenal and so let's just pull that tool up here and you're gonna see here where it says all search terms or excuse me it says search terms and so you wanna add your search terms so it might be let's say tennis 
is your search term because that's kind of your broad niche and, and I want to identify what I'm doing here. So you want to put in kind of your broad niche here because you kind of want to see what your what's been going on with your niche over time. And you're going to notice here that there's a variety of different um, elements that you can gather from just typing in tennis or your main niche here. You'll notice here this is the interest over time dating back to January 2004 and you notice how it fluctuates and kind of goes up and down. Notice how it might be going down slightly. It's on its way back up. You can also notice, look at this. There is a big interest for tennis in Australia. There is a huge interest in France and Switzerland and the United States is clear down at number eight for tennis. You would also notice as you keep going that top searches are table tennis, believe it or not. Um, gets more searches than US Open tennis or tennis games or, or other tennis shoes even or something of that. Those are other hot keyword phrases that you could consider because you could create a whole niche around table tennis because you see in the tennis niche that actually gets more searches than regular tennis. Um, rising searches you're going to notice here we tennis Virtua Tennis 3 it's like a game um, you know tennis warehouse so if you had a site in that niche you could find keyword phrases because it's telling you they're trending it gives you an insight into what the market's doing here's another example let me just show you one more example here and then we'll move on type in weight loss as an example and not every keyword phrase will actually you know, come up here, but most will. So you're going to notice here weight loss. In the United States, it's, more popular, it's the most popular keyword phrase you know, of all the countries. Weight loss diet is a top search term. Lose weight, weight loss pills. And so you can use this tool synergistically, with, like together, with the Google AdWords keyword tool. I'll show you one more time what I'm talking about. Do a Google Insights search. Look up weight loss diet. So you do search for weight loss diet right here because Google Insights tells you that's a search a top search with the term weight loss in it so weight loss diet I jump right over here to the AdWords keyword tool I click on this I follow through their little steps and it, I pull up a whole list of keywords just with weight loss diet within those keyword phrases now I've got you know another hundred or seventy or so keywords just around weight loss diet every single one of these keywords could be an additional article for you to submit through an article directory it could be an additional site uh, or excuse me an additional article to put on your website and all this stuff's gonna work together to increase your traffic because you're having more content you're gonna notice you know ally uh, alley weight loss that's a breakout that means tons of people are looking for it um, biggest loser you know that's a TV show these are all additional keywords that if you had a site around weight loss you could focus on or you could even develop an entire niche around these so it's also kind of a great tool for niche research I'll show you I, I said one more result and I'm gonna show you one more here for a local market like let's say Chicago uh, dentist for example and we'll see if it even shows up here and it does it does actually show up some results here and you'll notice here that it's pretty stable people are looking for Chicago dentist not surprising most of them are in the US when they're looking for that and it will tell you their top searches dentist in Chicago Chicago dental dentist Chicago IL you know Illinois dentist in Chicago cosmetic dentist Chicago so it tells you right here okay these are the keywords if you're a dentist that you should be going after so I hope that this sticks with you and that you use this tool it's a Google Insights tool and it's very very powerful Google Trends I don't have to show you that is you can just click on that and it will actually show you trending topics so keyword phrases that are trending um, obviously you can look at competitor websites you can look at competing websites and you can look at their title tags to identify what keyword phrases they are targeting I'll show you um, you know what I mean here by title tags so um, I clicked on here and let's just go and look up google.com oh what the heck while I'm over here on Google Trends why don't I just show you that um, it bothers me to not show you this um, here is Google Trends. It will tell you, like, um, you know, you could type in uh, search a trend, you know, for example. So it could be, um, let's say, you know, title list, title list golf clubs. And I'm not really a golfer. I've got a friend that is, but I'm just using these as an example. 
Um, but you'll notice here it tells you kind of a trend over time for that keyword phrase Titleist and Golf Clubs. Notice here how it like really drops off, but now it's become stable over the past several years and it's kind of rising and, and going around. You might try, you know, Nintendo Wii and it will give you some examples. And it also, what's interesting with this Google Trends tool um, that I do want to indicate to you is it tells you um, what cities are actually doing the most searches on this particular topic. You know, it'll tell you like um, Nintendo Wii, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania happens to be a city where most people are, more people are looking for that, um, according to this tool, than any um, in the United States. And look at all these United Kingdom sites that are interested in the N Nintendo Wii. So, you know, that's just an example. You type in your keyword phrase into Google Trends, and away you go. Um, but if I go here to Google, and let's just type in, you know, Nintendo Wii as an example. Um, let's say Nintendo Wii in stock, a little more narrow keyword phrase. This is the title tag, which I'm going to address here in a moment. This is the title tag, and so you could just type in your main niche, and all your competitors will come up, and you can look at their title tags to identify keywords they are using. The blue clickable part is your title tag. So let's just jump right down here to the presentation. And then you can also go to ezinearticles.com. It's an article directory. And look through, browse through your category and look at the titles of the articles and look at what keyword phrases they're using in the titles. Because most of the time they will have done some of their research. But like I said, you can use the AdWords tool to identify some keyword phrases. So I'm going to keep going. I, pro, I, I tried to, to keep this content down, but there is so much to cover with SEO. So um, remember plurals and synonyms like auto parts, car parts, automobile parts. Keep in mind merged and hyphenated words. Um, even misspellings, uh, like I said, plurals and synonyms, you know, like when I was saying auto uh, car part or car parts, those would be different. Um, add keyword modifiers to your keywords. So things like buy Nintendo Wii, cheap pet supplies, best price Motorola. Those are all some indicators and examples of modifying keyword phrases. Like buy Nintendo Wii, that means they want a Nintendo Wii. Find Tulsa chiropractor, you know, um, find uh, Chicago lawyer, find Los Angeles realtor, um, things like that. You know, add those keyword modifiers to your keywords or add them into your keyword research tool and see if there's actually traffic for them. And so let's just jump over here. Uh, looks like this similar slide. Okay, so next, next we have on-page search engine optimization. So at this point, you should have identified your main keyword phrases that you are going to go after. And I'm going to step you through the on-page process. Um, the one very, very important factor is title tags. Another important thing to consider is using your meta tags on your site. And the next uh, very important strategy is your header tags within your site. And then we're going to cover your internal link structure, your URL structure, the links on your site, and the structure of your actual content. So here is the title tags that I'm going to talk about here. Title tags are very important, like I showed you in Google. It's the number one factor. Um, they're the single most important on-page ranking factor out there. You should really, really take this to heart, this part to heart. If you, if you take this into action this week and Google picks up the results you do, just by accident, you'll start seeing an improvement in your search results. A lot of sites make the mistake of having their title tag read very bla uh, um, just very uh, random things like uh, like home or it might say untitled or or their title tag you know isn't isn't related. Um, their title tag might even just have their business name, which that doesn't do a business any good to have your title tag up there. You need to have keyword phrases. A lot of business say, but I need that for branding. Well, put it at the end of your title tag because if they know your business name, they you already have them as a customer. You're in business and you're doing SEO to get new customers. So make sure you put your pride aside and go for your keyword phrases in your title tag. You need to have your keyword phrases. I cannot emphasize that. I'm very passionate about title tag part because you cannot get by with SEO and you will not see an improvement in your search engine rankings if you do not focus on this factor. It's very important. It's, it's near essential. It's a very essential part of search engine optimization. Um, so now when you're looking at the code on your, you know, on a particular page, um, you know, this is what it's going to look like. And I'll show you here what I'm talking about here. If I were to pull up, let's just say a random site here. Um, so I pull up this website right here as an example. And I go to view and I do page source. So notice I just did the view and page source. 
you will notice here, um, right here, title, it's got their main keyword phrase, Nintendo Wii Tracker, find Nintendo Wii in stock. So notice they're using the keyword phrase, Nintendo Wii Tracker, because people were trying to track Nintendo Wiis when they were hard to find, so that was their main keyword phrase. And then Nintendo Wii in stock, that's a secondary keyword phrase they're trying to go for. Um, you know, Nintendo Wii in stock online, that's another long tail keyword phrase. You notice how they're using their title tag. And this, when you're inside of your web editor, like it might be a standard basic web editor, like, um, you know, there's some free ones called NVU, some more common ones used are Front Page or Dreamweaver, and you click on the code view section of your website, you are going to see right inside the code view of your website, you will see the title, um, the title tag. It would be between this wording, title, T-I-T-L-E, uh, with carrots on the left and carrots on the right, and then there's going to be another set that says title, but this one at the end is going to have a forward slash. And so inside that tag, that's where you write your keyword phrase in there. And oftentimes, by default, they will just call that tag, you know, like uh, like untitled one or something like that. Um, so that's something for you to keep in mind. So, so that is where you go with uh, title tags. You want your keyword rich title tag to show up right there. Now, if you're using WordPress, your, uh, your main homepage title tag can be manipulated and changed by simply um, going inside your WordPress and changing the name of your site under the settings. And then you can also use a plugin called All-in-One SEO. It's just called All-in-One SEO. And you can use a pl that plugin to actually change your title tags on your homepage. And so um, we're going to be covering WordPress later on in this training, not in this, this particular call, uh, but in future ones. And we'll show you how to do that in there. But if you have any questions on that, uh, contact me anytime this week regarding WordPress. Um, you know, as far as if you have any questions on changing your title tag, please ask because it's such an important part. The title tag should contain the exact phrase you are trying to rank for. The exact main key keyword phrase should be at the very beginning because search engines read left to right. When I say SES, that stood for search engines. Search engines read from left to right, just like we read they will put more importance on your keyword if it's at the left than they would if it's you know kind of you know more towards the right they read left to right they look at that and so you want to try to have your main keyword phrase because that's going to tell them that is most important on that page that page is going to be relevant there's that word again for the keyword phrase that you identified from the previous steps you should try to repeat the keyword phrase or a plural slash singular version of it somewhere in the title tag. That's gonna help you get the best benefit possible. Now I'm not saying that you just say your keyword phrase three times in a row or two times in a row even. Put it in there if it makes sense and I'll show you some examples here. Um, so for example, the keep in mind that the singular and plural keyword phrases come up differently in the search engines like I showed you. And that's why you know golf club and golf clubs was two totally different search results. So that's why it's important you know, to go after those. Tulsa Chiropractors and Tulsa Chiropractor would bring up two different search results. Car, car dealership, auto, or car dealership, car dealerships will bring up two different keyword phrases. So for example, laptops and laptop produce totally different results. You want both of those in your title tag. Here's an example of how that works. Dog collars, find the best dog collar for your dog. So that would be your title tag. Dog collars is your main keyword phrase with the S. Find the best dog collar for your dog. And what is interesting here is your title tag, it's also you wanna make it tr kind of uh, salesy almost. Not really salesy, but, but you know, so it, so it reads well, so it sounds well, so it encourages the click. Because it's one thing to get people to your site, or, or excuse me, to come up in Google, it's another thing to encourage them to click among all the other options to click that they have on, on the Google search engine. So you wanna make sure you sell the click. So dog collars, you know, find the best dog collar for your dog. Notice I'm using the plural and singular there. Now weight loss, there's really not a plural of weight loss, but I'm trying to incorporate weight loss twice. Weight loss, your source for weight loss tips. Weight loss articles, you know, your source for weight loss article. You know, or weight loss tips, or something like that. So you notice how I kind of bring those together, um, and these again were samples of good title tags. And I'll show you here. I'm going to jump off the page here one more time, though, just so you understand again what the title tags are and where I was going with this. So let's just say here, 
I'm using the Google toolbar in case you're wondering. So um, you notice here Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractors. Notice here inside the title tags, and you guys will probably recognize this little ugly site <laughs> that, I, that I designed just real quick and I haven't even finished it. Uh, but notice I'm on the first page, that, that proves it right there. You all saw me with this website. But notice this title tag, I'm very proud of this title tag. Um, Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractors. Find a Tulsa chiropractor today. So you notice how that's got the keyword phrase. So um, you know, notice that again is the title tag. That is in, in the title tag of the website. That's what the search engines picked up. So there you have the title tag. And um, so there, there's that as an example. So if you have any questions this week about title tags, let me know because as you see here, it's the most important factor because these are all title tags that search engines are looking, looking at and for. So let's go right over here to meta tags next. Meta tags and meta description. The meta tags, including the meta keywords and the meta, meta description, they have a very minimal part of ranking of making you rank high in the search engines, but they should be used. Now you probably say, why on earth would I say that? They have a minimal role. They used to play a big role until people started spamming them like crazy, you know, and putting in keywords like Amazon, you know, when their site was just about, um, you know, their, their site was about uh, a totally different subject like golf clubs. You know, they're putting in Amazon or other random high, high searched for topics just in their meta keywords to try to rank for because search engines used to rank them that way. Your meta description is especially important because it is what the search engines will typically pull from the search results um, to actually include below your title tag. So you need to include your main keyword phrase for the page in there and some sort of a call to action. I'll show you uh, what I mean by this. So if we go right over here and let's say, um, let's just use the Chicago dentist example. So you do a search here for Chicago dentist and you notice here, you know, web special, one dollar exam, x-rays, or free teeth whitening. We accept insurance, gentle, clean, uh, gentle cleanings, veneers, and braces, cosmetic, and family dentistry. That's a nice meta description because a lot of times what will happen is sites will uh, basically, you know, they, they won't put in anything special into their meta tags. And so what will happen is Google will go in there kind of formulate their own little meta tag if they don't have one most of the time. Sometimes they'll just do it anyways. But a lot of the times what happens is Google will just formulate their own so it does not look very exciting for people. You know, so here's one open seven days a week. That's really good. Um, let me find one. These people have done pretty good on this first page. Um, first page, but let's see. Chicago Dentist Guide. Okay, so here's one. This isn't very exciting. Chicago Dentist Guide, colon, 1833 Dentist Chicago, 1,833 Dentist Chicago Reviews, Cosmetic Dentist, Indodontitis, Orthodontist, um, you know, and all these other big words. That's not very exciting to read that in your meta, in your meta description. You know, that's not very exciting. And so, you know, this is a lot more exciting. Web Special, $1 exam and x-rays or free teeth whitening that makes me want to click you know that makes me want to click on their website now I want to point out something here so you understand look at their title tag if you're trying to look for a title tag on your website or any website at all look at the top left hand corner of your browser whether it's Mozilla or Internet Explorer that keyword phrase will show up there so notice how they are doing a fabulous job of uni using Dennis Chicago Cosmetic Dentist, Orthodontist Chicago. So now they get the keywords um, Chicago Cosmetic Dentist, Dentist Chicago Cosmetic, um, you know, Chicago orth Orthodontist, Orthodontist Chicago. They have all those up in their keyword phrase in their title tag. So here's their, you know, little website. It's very clean, very basic. Um, but you notice how they've done that. But they encourage the click because unlike everybody else, you know, uh, these other ones, they actually said web special $1 exam and I want to find it. Now, I mean, here you go, special web offer. That's a great deal to have a $1 exam. I mean, I don't understand how that works, so it makes me interested. It gets me intrigued. And so it's kind of interesting to figure out what this is all about, what they're about. But notice how you want to sell people on your click. And so you not only want to be slightly creative in your title tag, if you can, if you cannot, don't worry about it, but use your meta description because that's your opportunity to encourage people. If you do not use it, Google would just pull something at random. Like Google could say, 
um, something like um, they, they might just pull something that says Chicago Dentist Orthodontics Cosmetic Cosmetic uh, Dentist Chicago. Now they use kind of they're kind of stuffing keywords up here, but it is working for them. Um, but you notice that's what Google may have pulled if they didn't they've defined an actual made a description. And so that's something for you to keep in mind um, and as to why you need to use a meta description and why you want to use a meta description. Um, so your meta, the meta tag should be used very carefully, but it should only include the page's main keyword phrase. So if, if that page on your website is targeting working capital financing, that should be in your meta keyword phrase. If that page is targeting the keyword phrase, um, you know, wood nutcrackers, you know, like the like the little dolls at Christmas, um, you know, wooden nutcrackers, then that's what that page is targeting. If that page is targeting popcorn. Um, popcorn supplies or popcorn machines then that's what it's targeting if it's targeting antique popcorn machines then that's what your meta tag um, keyword will say but you also want to try to use it in your meta description because and the reason you use it is not as much for the search engine rankings but it's more for relation people typed in you know you're trying to rank for a keyword phrase um, antique popcorn popper for example obviously if they type that in that's what they want to find so if you include that in your enticing sentence, you could say, find the best variety of antique popcorn poppers here. So it gets your keyword phrase in there, but it grabs their attention. Because what'll happen is Google will bold that keyword phrase if it's in your meta description. So it helps your listing stand out a little more in Google. <coughs> Excuse me. So, So that kind of is, you know, defined with meta descriptions here. And I, I apologize, I'm going long. I always go longer than I anticipate. There's just so much content here. So examples of good meta descriptions: get in touch with a Tulsa, Oklahoma chiropractor that it, that is uh, both trustworthy and reliable. Now I didn't do a good job proofreading that. I apologize. Um, working capital financing. What is working capital financing? Working capital financing is the lifeblood of your growing business. So it kind of, you know, that one doesn't as much sell them, but it kind of informs them as to what it's about and so they say okay I'll click for more info on that or you know this one's more like get in touch with Tulsa Oklahoma chiropractor that's trustworthy and reliable so you're like okay I'm look, I, know, I, I like trustworthy and reliable people to do business with so let's find somebody um, to do business with that's trustworthy and reliable or maybe it's something to the fact of you have a free report on on weight loss you know five tips to losing weight maybe it's a free report on being a better bird watcher maybe it's a free report on rock climbing secrets um, you know, whatever the case might be, you know, download my free rock climbing, um, rock climbing shoes shopping guide or whatever. Put that in your meta description if you offer a report because people like to get stuff for free. They like to be informed. So include those things in your meta description. Here's an example of the meta tag. I know that, you know, your eyes might be glazing over right now when you see this, but this is basically the, what I showed you here, I apologize, um, what I was showing you on that page when I was doing a, a files and I did the search for view source code on those pages this is the kind of result that comes up this is HTML code but you can easily edit this code by just typing you know replacing these keyword phrases so uh, when you have your own website um, you know you would just use find and replace uh, or excuse me um, use the the view source code option on your web editor like Microsoft front page um, once you're inside there you know where it says title put in your keywords where it says keywords and content, you're gonna see that option. Type in your one keyword phrase for that page, and then where it says description content, type in your sentence in your meta description. So that's how you use meta tags. Now, header tags are a little bit different. I'm gonna go check our time real quick. Make sure, okay, so we're doing okay on time here. I'm gonna to try to go another about 30 minutes of content, or 20, 20 or so minutes of content, and then we'll open up the floor for questions and answers. So header tags after title tags are extremely important to your on-page SEO. When I keep talking about on-page SEO, I'm talking about changes you can make to your website um, so that your website itself comes up higher in the search engines. In the HTML code, like the view source section of your web editor program, um, your, your header tags would look like this, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6 with the little caret symbols. That's what they would look like in your HTML code. For example, the H1 tag typically generates the largest font, so it's the most important one that the search engines look at. Um, they will actually look uh, pretty highly at your H1 tag. The header tags act like headlines on your web page, and so 
I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like. Your header tags should look natural and they would look they'd be like subheadlines on your pages. So like a lot of sales pages have subheadlines and even a lot of articles like to break up the article because we all know people um, have short attention spans online and they want to get the information that they that they are there to look for. So they want to include you want to try to include that um, you know information in those headers so they kind of draws them in to read more of your copy. But by doing so, you want to try to incorporate your keyword phrases somehow. So, for example, um, I'm I'm a Washington State Cougar uh, fan. I attended the the school, and so you know, here's an example. Your source for WSU Cougars gear. That's my keyword phrase. WSU Cougars gear. Um, that would be like my H1 tag. No, it's kind of big and it stands out at the top. And you can edit this by simply finding um, you know inside your view source section. Uh, you know, in, inside your content. You can also modify this uh, within WordPress in the code view section, in the code view of WordPress. And again, if you need help with this, that's what we're here, that's what I'm here for. So you guys have access to me through email and I want you to make sure you're reaching out to me to, to get your, your questions answered because I do not want you to have any stumbling blocks. So your source for WSU Cougars gear. Um, your article would go here, uh, you know, so there's your article and you have a short couple paragraphs to start off your article. Um, and then you also hit them with another little subheadline. Buy WSU Cougars gear and save. So it gets the keyword phrase in there one more time, uh, but this time it goes you know, inside the H2 tag. And so then your article continues there and you don't have to use all six of them. You could only use one or you could use two or you could use three or what, whatever you want within that article, but it kind of breaks it up. Um, but I'll show you here an example before I jump off here. Of a, of a great site that does a fabulous job of using this. Um, this is a, a guy who runs a site that's a phenomenal SEO guy. Um, this site gets a lot of unique visitors each month and they have some fabulous content and it's a site that I actually support and, and do stuff with. It's a, a Christian website. Um, so this site they talk about is the Bible true? Um, they talk about uh, notice how they're using their keyword phrase in their various sub headlines and you can actually size your h1 and h2 tags so that they are not the exact same size and I'm just pulling up this site just so you guys see an example of a fabulous uh, way to use your header tags and how it kind of breaks up the content um, so you notice here you know that kind of draws people into what they're gonna find on each paragraph um, so like my WSU Cougars gear example that you know by WSU Cougars gear would be here um, their keyword phrase on this page is is the Bible true and um, you know that's the only keyword phrase notice that in their title tag um, notice that in their URL structure notice that right here that's the only keyword phrase they're trying to focus on and they and that gives you the best results possible so I definitely want to show you that you know as an example of what I meant by the header tag example so you can jump right over here to internal leak structure so your website should be easily spidered by the search engines. If your site is not easily spidered by the search engines, then that means the search engine spiders and the search engines cannot find your site. Because the search engine spiders go out there to find websites and they have a little, you know, it's a little program, computer program they use that goes out there and picks up your website. You want them to find all your pages. And you do that by offering text-based links within your, your website. So you want to have text-based links for your website. So a great example here is Petronic.com. This is a site that I used to be a major owner in. I'm a very small part of it now, um, but it's a site that uh, we we get a lot of it, or actually all our traffic right now, basically through SEO traffic, um, search engine optimization. And you notice here that on the left side side here we've got our navigation, and it is all text-based links. These are all text links. And you notice how you know you click on them, and they go right over there. So what happens is the search engine spiders come in here and they will just eat up this content. So they would just come in here and they can follow these links all the way through to the internal pages of content. And they just go through these sites and they can pick up the content. So um, that's how you know text-based links are. That's what I'm referring to. Um, these would be considered image links. Now um, we are using image links, but that's because in the footer of our website, we also include the similar subject lines that you saw at the top, at the top, uh, excuse me, in the footer here. And so um, that is where, you know, that is showing up here. So you've got, what you want to have is if you're going to use fancy navigation, like using images or using uh, JavaScript or something of that nature, 
you're going to want to also include it in the footer as a text-based link because the search engine spiders um, have the easiest time following text-based links. I'm not saying they can't follow image links, they can't follow uh, JavaScript links, it just makes it more difficult. And they have no problem finding text-based text -based links um, to, to find them. And one thing I want to draw your attention to is notice this clickable part of the link also is the main keyword phrase for that particular page. And what that does, that's called the anchor text. I know you've heard that said before. But anchor text is a very important aspect of search engine optimization because anchor text is what is the clickable part of the link. It's the clickable text. That's another uh, way to talk about anchor text. And it should be your main key, that, that page's main keyword phrase should be in that anchor text. So for example, uh, beeper callers. That page right here is all about beeper callers. You're gonna notice here, beeper callers. That right there, it is actually text-based. That's an H1 tag right there, beeper callers. Um, and then you'll notice here, beeper callers, dog beeper callers, dog training. Uh, notice that in the title tag. Notice that in the breadcrumbs, so the search engines can find those breadcrumbs. Um, and also in our URL structure. So it's very, very clean. It kind of just, you know, it's very well optimized. And what happens though, when you're doing this is, um, you know, the actual website itself will uh, rank higher in the search engines when you're, you know, it basically it'll help these internal pages of your site rank when you're telling the search engine spiders what to expect. Like they know because beeper colors is in the anchor text that if they go through this text, they're going to find beeper colors. So it gives the gives your site and your page a little relevancy boost because on this page there's content about beeper colors because that's what's being sold here. Now you could also have text down here if you wanted to or other things. Uh, but this is a site that just sells products. So it's basically focused more on just just products as content. You know, so each one of these beeper callers, you know, if you click on it, it goes even further, and you'll notice Dogtra 2500 T and B 400 yard training and beeper caller. That's a, a brand of caller. That's a specific keyword phrase. Dogtra. Notice again in my title tag. I just want to keep reiterating these points to you so you understand how the search engine optimization all works together and then why you want to have the relevancy. This page is very relevant for this keyword phrase. So that's something very important and essential for you to consider. Um, you need to use anchor text when you link into pages within your site. The keyword should be part of the link. So right here is an example. Whoop, let me go right back here. This is what your link would look like. And this says, you know, you could actually copy this down uh, when you watch the recording. Uh, but inside your link where it says your domain, that's your URL, that's your link. And then inside here where it says Chicago Lawyer, that's like the keyword phrase. So if you are a lawyer in Chicago and you are linking to your website or to a page inside your website, you would want to try to link with the anchor text link because that gives you a powerful search engine boost. So that's a very important aspect of search engine optimization. You should have no more than two links from your home page to your internal pages. So that's something to keep in mind. Now if you're using WordPress, for example, it does a great job already of providing good internal link structure. You want to use a sitemap and an RSS feed if possible, um, if at all possible with your website. So you do want to use a sitemap and an RSS feed if possible. So you want to include um, you know, a sitemap and I'll show you kind of an example. A sitemap will contain all of your links. So even if you don't have all your links in your navigation on your homepage, you want to have a sitemap link in the footer of the website so the search engines can find it. Can find it. Sitemap links are all text-based links uh, that basically help the search engine spiders uh, come in and pick up all of your content all at once. So they come into that page and they find all that content um, which links to the pages on your site. So it gives it enables them to find all your pages because it does you no good to have articles on your site. Uh, it doesn't matter how great the articles are, if the search engines can't find the articles, it's not going to give you the benefit that you are seeking. Uh, the URL structure in here, let me jump off here and quickly show you an example of an actual uh, sitemap. So let me jump right over here. Um, here is a site that does a great job. Notice here in the footer, uh, if you were to click on sitemap right here, it would take you into a page that has a sitemap. It's got a link to all their different pages on their website. So you notice here, um, you know, bad credit uh, business loans. If you clicked on that, um, this site's actually broken down into several different sitemaps. Um, but basically, you get the idea here. 
of how a sitemap works. You can access a sitemap from the footer of the website. That's usually the most convenient place to put it. So it's a text-based link that so the search engines will look for and grab, and they will use that. Another thing that will function very similar to how a sitemap will function for you is that is the uh, RSS feed. And if you're using WordPress, by default, your site will have an RSS feed. Your URLs or links should contain your main keyword in it. So for example, it should be like yourdomainname.com forward slash you know, Miami dash pest control. So if you are a pest control service in Miami, um, or maybe you have a site related to pest control and you're just targeting different, um, so maybe it's like um, you know, floridapestcontrol.com and then you have sub pages related to each different city and then keyword phrase pest control. That's just an example here. Um, so floridapestcontrol.com forward slash uh, Orlando Pest Control Florida uh, Florida uh, Pest Control .com forward slash um, let's just say uh, Jacksonville Pest Control you know different cities in, in uh, Florida um, and then you get the idea Tampa Bay dash pest dash control the reason you want to try to use the dashes within the, those links is because the search engines will actually um, uh, look at the dashes as actually spaces and so it actually will give you another spot where your keyword phrase will show up in the search engines. So for example here, you know if you had a site about tennis and you have a sub page about Wilson tennis rackets, it'd be like Wilson dash tennis dash rackets. Just like you saw on that pet site that I was showing you, for example, uh, notice how the keyword phrase, there's a separation there. So the next thing here, I just want to make sure everybody still hears. Okay. So the next thing you do here is you want to make sure that you have your keyword phrase separated by the dash. And if you have WordPress, you want to use the permalinks from WordPress to do this. So you want to name your HTML. You also want to name your HTML files in your web editor. Um, you know, and you want to do this on your future pages. So if you're using um, you know your let's say you're using a front page for example and you go to file save as because that's how you save your pages when you create them um, just save it as you know Miami dash pest dash control you know your dash keyword dash you know here you know <laughs> you get the idea um, so I'll show you here real quick how to use the permalinks uh, within a uh, WordPress so let me just go right over here to paulcounts.com forward slash um, go to my administration side of things and let me actually use a more recent website here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to quickly use this in WordPress, the permalink structure. And then we're getting uh, to the point of wrapping things up for this particular training. We'll open up for questions and um, you know try to have about 30 minutes or so for Q&A time. So what we've got here is um, if we come right over here to right inside of your WordPress you're gonna see on the left hand side it's gonna say settings and you wanna just click on settings and then inside settings you wanna click on permalinks and once you clicked on permalinks it's going to have a default structure right here you wanna select custom structure and inside custom structure you wanna type in forward slash and then you want to do the percentage sign, which you hit that by doing the shift and the hitting the number five key. And then you want to type in the word post name, and then you want to do percentage sign and then forward slash. And what that will do is that will create search engine friendly uh, links for your WordPress. And so by doing so, what it does then is it basically takes and puts the dash in between each of your keyword phrases. So it makes uh, you know the custom structure show up you know correctly for your individual keyword phrases so that's that's exactly you know what it does and that's how you use that so it's just you log into your WordPress this is WordPress 2.7 go under settings and choose permalinks and then choose your custom structure and then the next thing that you're going to do then is you're going to go right over um, one other thing inside WordPress that I just want to point out to you real fast while I'm back here um, notice here under the general settings so general settings Notice here it says blog title. Even if you don't have the all-in-one SEO plugin installed, you can put in your keyword phrase inside the blog title and that will give your overall site the main keyword phrase. And then usually by default, even just with the default setting, uh, WordPress will actually put your main keyword phrase inside the article titles of your individual post. 
Um, but if you actually are using the all in one SEO plugin, I'll show you how to use that when you're adding new content. So if you're right here and you chose add new content, and this is going back to the example, so you, you write in your article title, you write in your article, and then you scroll down to where it says all in one SEO pack, and that's the plugin you're gonna to wanna to write down. It's all A-L-L-I-N-1-O-N-E SEO pack. And then uh, where it says title, you could actually put in whatever title tag you want using the examples I showed you from the training. For the description, you put in your, your nice meta description because that will enable the search engines to possibly, you know, you can entice people. You can sell the click within the search engines because you can create your meta description that way. And then you can put in your keywords, um, you know, separate your meta keywords, which in this case is just the main keyword phrase you're trying to go after. So that is how you do, um, you know, the URL structure. And so the next little bit here, we're almost done here, I promise. So that's how you do your URL structure. You want to try to do dashes to separate things. Now content structure. Um, this is very important. Your articles on your site should contain your main keywords near the beginning of them. So you want to write your articles so they're unique, so they're relevant, so they have high quality content. But you, you really, um, in order to tell the search engines that, that an article is relevant for a particular keyword phrase, like let's say the article is on Wilson Tennis Rackets. If you don't mention Wilson Tennis Rackets in the first paragraph or two, um, it's not going to look very relevant to Google, nor to your, nor to the person using it. So you want to look out for your users because they're there to find a Wilson tennis racket. So if your site happens to come up for that keyword phrase, uh, because you've used it in your title tag and your URL structure, but you don't talk about Wilson tennis racket until paragraph three, you know it's not going to do your users any good. So when you're because they may think, well, I, I didn't, you know, I'm not finding the content I'd hope to find on this page. You know, for example. So, you know, in your content structure, you would have like the title of your little article of the, on that page be an H1 tag. And in case you're wondering, if you're using WordPress, and I keep talking about it, uh, but WordPress will automatically put the main title, it goes right into an H1 tag by default. So that's something for you to keep in mind. So it's already done for you whenever you create your post. So that's why it's important to try to incorporate your keyword phrase in your article titles uh, within WordPress. And if you're just using standard HTML, to do your sites, that's not a problem at all. You know, just go ahead and put in your, your main keyword phrase in there. And so you want to try to have your main keywords, uh, your main keyword phrase, so if it's Wilson Tennis Racket, you want to try to mention it at least one time or so in that first paragraph. Now, um, there's nothing, articles should be broken apart with the header tags in between if possible. Um, not only will that help your readers, um, because it will actually, you know, kind of break things up because it's really hard to, uh, on websites. People don't want to sit there and read uh, you know 500 words at once they like to have little subheadings and things so try to break it up uh, when you're doing your articles on your site you should try to include your main keyword once or twice in the first paragraph excuse me in the first paragraph and place it anywhere that makes sense in the next paragraph and that's an important statement I'm making it needs to make sense you do not want to write content that doesn't flow and that doesn't make sense so you know I would not sit there and talk all about um, you know let's say Tulsa chiropractors I wouldn't say, you know, find the best Tulsa chiropractors, Tulsa chiropractors are the bomb, uh, Tulsa chiropractors are trustworthy, Tulsa chiropractors this, Tulsa chiropractors that. That doesn't flow well. So you do not want to stuff with keywords. Not only will that get, you know, a little red flag to the search engines that you're trying too hard to optimize, but it's also going to send a red flag to your readers that, you know, you don't care enough about them to write good content. So you need to write good, solid content that they're going to read, actually. That's very important. So it needs to be search engine friendly solid content. Try to include your main keyword in the last paragraph of the article if possible to kind of close it out. That's you know just kind of kind of well-rounded approach to getting that content on there. So you want to include um, you know one or two times in the first paragraph where it makes sense in the middle paragraphs and then try to close out with that keyword phrase. And that's going to kind of give you that nice balance of relevancy and, and only include it at the end if it makes sense. If it flows in your clothes, put it in there. If not, don't use it. You know, don't say, well, Paul said I need to have it. So you, so you write it in there. Just do it if it makes sense. That's the important thing is use your keyword as it makes sense, but use it. You know, a lot of times people well, they, you know, they may not try to use it. So it's important to try to incorporate your keyword phrase in your content, but don't overuse it. Don't abuse it. Use it, but don't abuse it. Oh, that kind of rhymed. Uh, perfect keyword density is an absolute myth. I know a lot of SEO people might be seeing that going, hey. <laughs> but it's, it's a myth. There's no such thing as perfect keyword density. Uh, not only will it waste your time because you're going to be sitting there calculating, you know, according to my calculations, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, I've got 500 words of content and, 
and I've got the keyword 20 times and so I need to have a keyword density of 0.113 or whatever. You know, there's no, no such thing. Don't bother with that. Don't worry about a percentage. There's really no set percentage. If your article makes sense to you, if you can read it out loud or if you can read your own article and it makes sense, if you basically if it reads like you speak, then it's good enough to go. If it reads like you speak and it and it really, you know, gives good content, good information, then it's good. You know, you just want to try to include your keyword phrase because it makes sense because if your article is relevant about a subject obviously it's going to include your keyword phrase so really there's no it's there's no science behind that part of it or really any of this SEO that I'm showing you it's just a matter of putting things in in you know good locations and so don't worry about perfect keyword density just write good solid content you know you'd spend you could write five articles in the time it take you to sit there and calculate keyword density of one you know so sit there and write those five articles because that's going to do better for you and then read your content and make sure it flows and makes sense. Just, you know, don't insert keywords because you think you have to. Don't abuse keywords though. Don't overuse them. You know, if, if you have to, err on the err on the low side of using them, but still use them. I can't stress that part enough. Make sure they're in there because it makes sense. Um, don't get caught up with it at all. Um, write for humans and not for search engines, and the search engines will appreciate your content. Like I said at the beginning, the search engines are there. Um, you know they want to partner with you they want to show your content to their visitors believe it or not and they you know it's not that they're out they want you to succeed but uh, basically if you succeed they will succeed because as you come up there you're gonna write more good content um, they want to show your site and I'm not saying that you know they're gonna signal you out and, and pick just your site because there's tons of competing sites but it will by default signal you out because a lot of sites are not focusing on basic SEO principles they want to provide their users with good results and good information. So if you send people to a site with good information, high value content, that's search engine friendly, um, then you will be just fine. And yes, it does take a little bit of work for SEO, but it's not all that bad, as I hope you saw here. Try to write unique and relevant articles for your individual website. That's very important. Target, and then target one keyword phrase per article. So don't try to target every single keyword phrase that you saw on that list. You know, within your, within your title tags and things. You know, if you have a list of 30 different keyword phrases and they're all in a similar niche, you know, maybe it's all about rock climbing shoes, and you have 20 different keyword phrases that you could go after. Try to write 20 different articles on rock climbing shoe. You know, the variations of those keyword phrases. Uh, if if you can, I mean, if if you can write good content on only five of those twenty keyword phrases, then only use five of those because you can write uh, because there's no sense in writing you know having twenty spammy articles on your site you know if if they're all real short low value content. But if you know like let's say you have twenty keyword phrases related to rock climbing shoes, and you could easily pull out of twenty keyword phrases five solid articles you know and then target each one around one or two spe one mainly specific keyword phrase. That you use in your title tag, that you use in your URL link, that you use in your headings, and that you try to use in, in inside your content. And you do those things, you're going to be just fine. And then you link to those, you know, when you're doing WordPress, it will automatically add your content to an RSS feed um, and a sitemap for you using the Google Sitemap plugin. So it will be found. If you're using a static HTML site, just put the link, you know, in the sitemap and make sure you have a sitemap on your footer. And then the search engines will help find that new content. And if you want to, and you're using a static HTML site, use the content we talked about in that first video um, that has been uploaded for you, where it talks about using pingomatic.com or another site. 